Find horizontal asymptote for f of x equals to x over square root of x square plus 5. Now this is a very interesting question and most of the time I've seen students getting it wrong in the test paper. Now look into this video very carefully and understand the concept. And basic concept, concept which I'm going to use here is that what is square root of x square, right? If, if you can answer this question, you will get the right answer for this particular problem. Now let's first understand what is horizontal asymptote. So when we say horizontal asymptote, we are basically trying to figure out behavior of the function as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. It's kind of end behavior, right? So we are trying to figure out the end behavior. That is what our objective is. So that means as x approaches infinity plus what happens to the function and as x approaches negative infinity what happens to the function. Now if both answers are or if even one of the answer is that f of x approach a value let us say l. In that case we say horizontal asymptote exists since as the function is approaching infinity as the value x is approaching infinity, function is trying to approach a value. It is never there. So that is what horizontal asymptote is. And the equation of this will be y equals to l. Similarly, for when x approaches minus infinity, if f of x, let us say, approach a value, let's say k, in that case, horizontal asymptote will be y equals to k. Most of the cases, we find them to be the same, but there are many examples where we could have two horizontal asymptotes. So that's a very important thing to also understand. So many students think that horizontal asymptote is just one for a given function. We could have two different horizontal asymptotes. Now let's look into this function and try to find the horizontal asymptote. Function given to us is f of x equals to x over square root of x square plus 5. Now to find the horizontal asymptote, we basically want to find what is the limit of f of x as x approaches plus infinity or minus infinity. Correct? So we can write this as limit of this function as x approaches, we'll do both at the same time, okay? Plus or minus infinity. Should be what? should be limit of this function, correct? Limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity for this function. Now here, what I will do is, I'll factor the denominator and see how I'm doing it. I'm taking out x squared as common. x squared, then it becomes, um, I mean, I'm taking out x squared common. So I get 1 for x squared divided by x squared and plus 5 divided by x squared as the other factor, correct? If I take x square common, I need to divide 5 by x square. Well, what you can do is expand. If you expand this, what do you get? x square plus 5, correct? So that is how it works. Now the next step is kind of the most critical step of this exercise. So what I'm writing here is, as x approaches plus minus infinity, what happens? Now look at it carefully. One thing is very clear, and that is 5 over x square will approach 0, correct? Now, if you consider this 5 over x square, let me do it on the side, 5 over x square. Now, think about it like this. x is approaching infinity, very large number. Then this will approach 5 divided by a very large number, let's say, let's say like this, right? So that means approaching 0. So I can always say that this number is approaching 0, correct? So we'll forget about this and then we can write our function as x over square root of x square, right? Since 1 plus 0 is just 1 and x square times 1 will be this function. Now what is that equal to? So I'm just taking more time here so that you can, if you know, go ahead and answer it or just think about it. What is square root of x square? Now let me tell you, we have a video here which is in the same playlist which tells you what square root of x square is. Square root of x square is, is it x? If it is x, 
you get answer as 1, right? But let me tell you it is not x. It is absolute value of x. Think like this. If x is minus 1, then the answer is not minus 1. Square root is always returns your positive value. Since square root always returns your positive value, square root of x square is absolute x. So that's what you get. Correct? So this is a tricky part and this is where most of the time a mistake is committed. So take care of this step. Now let's move on. So limit of this function as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. So there are two cases, right? Now let's consider both the cases one by one. So what I will do here is kind of, I'll go bifurcate, right? That's a good way of doing it. So let's do two cases. That is one, when x approaches negative infinity on this side and when x approaches positive infinity, then what happens? So let's say limit when x approaches negative infinity and the function is x over absolute x, right? And the other case is, let me do it in another ink, which is limit x approaches positive infinity and the function is x over absolute x. Can you tell me what are these two values? What is this equal to and what is this equal to? All right? Now, just to give you an idea, what we can do is kind of sketch it on the side, right? I'm just sketching it. I've got limited space here, but let's make best use of it. Now, that is what it is. Now, we're trying to approach negative infinity. That means a negative large number. Remember, denominator is always positive, right? So, denominator will be positive, but the numerator will be, depending on the sign. If this is negative, it will be negative. So, it will return us a value, which is going to be? minus 1. Do you understand? So in this case, we'll get minus 1. But here, if I'm approaching positive infinity, this will return us plus 1. Do you see that? So we get two asymptotes in this particular case. One, as you're approaching negative infinity, the asymptote is at minus 1. And the other one is at plus 1. That is how it is. Do you get the point? So in such cases, we do get two asymptotes, one at x equals, at y equals to minus one, and the other one is y equals to plus one. So the equation for our asymptote is y equals to minus one in this case, and y equals to plus one in this case. So these are two answers for us. Do you understand? So in such cases, we do get two asymptotes, plus one and minus one. As an exercise, what you should do is find n behavior. That means, how does the function approach the asymptote, right? So find behavior of f of x near asymptotes. So we're talking about, at present, these two asymptotes. So find behavior of f of x near the asymptote. That is to say, you will be approaching this horizontal asymptote from above or from below. Do you get the point? So that is an exercise for you. Anyway, we did answer a question and we saw, it was very interesting to see that we have two horizontal asymptotes. That is one thing you learn. There's a possibility of two horizontal asymptotes. Since we're discussing two different values, right? X approaching positive infinity and negative infinity. So it makes sense. And second is, also remember, square root of x square is not just x, it is absolute x, and that is why we get the correct answer. If you would have written x here, then your answer would be just 1, right? It would have been wrong. I hope that helps you and saves you at times, and thank you. All the best.